Hello, and welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today, I want to talk about assignment operators and variables and constants and how they're used in math versus how they're used in popular programming languages today. Uh, the recent motivation for this topic is Martin Odersky is busy finalizing the feature set for the Scala 3 programming language, and he was proposing the idea of using colon equals for assignment rather than the single equals, which is common in the C syntax family. He has this example here, function increment, which increments the value of x. He says, this syntax is terribly wrong on several levels. One of these equals is about defining the function. The other equals about changing the value of variable x. It means two different things. Further, he says, by itself, x equals x plus 1 makes no sense and requires embarrassing explanations for everyone new to programming. That is, if they already familiarity with how variables work in math versus how they work in common programming languages today. How do they work in math? Well, most of us are probably familiar with that too. I can say, for example, x equals 1, and I get the plot here, x is 1. On this 2D plot, it doesn't matter what y is, I haven't defined anything about y. But I can't say x equals x plus 1. That makes no sense in math. I just said x is equal to value. That's not what it's equal to. That's just always going to be a false statement. And this is what he means by it makes no sense. Well, let's go a little bit into the history of math and algebra. Algebra was invented about 1,200 years ago by this guy al Khwarizmi who lived in Baghdad. And he wrote this text about his uh, invention of algebra as it came to be known later in the title of the book. Also, al Khwarizmi is where the word algorithm comes from that's in use today. Uh, in this book, he discussed it in, in textual representations of how the algebraic process works. It wasn't until several hundred years later from Francois Viette and René Descartes who popularized the way we use letters today in algebra. Let's look a little bit more at how this works. We could have, for example, an equation x plus y equals 5, which describes the relationship between these two variables. These values don't change. They're just not fully defined. They're more like functions of each other. There's a relationship between them. This is an underdetermined system. We can add a second equation for two equations and two unknowns to make it a fully determined system. y equals 2x. Now, x and y have specific values. 1 and 2 thirds for x, 3 and a third for y. We call them variables, even though their values don't change. They have a specific set value. Why do we call them variables, and what is a constant in math? We could use a constant pi, for example. Pi here is different from a variable because it has the same value wherever you go. If I go to a new problem and I talk about pi there, it's going to mean the same thing most likely. If I travel from the United States to Guatemala and I talk to a math teacher and I say, what's pi? They're going to give me the same answers I get here. Or if I go to the other side of the world, anybody I talk to with the same math tradition is going to expect pi to mean the same thing. It's like a common library that we import into our mathematical problems. And that's what a constant is. It's the same thing everywhere we go. Whereas a variable, it doesn't change values, but it has a locally defined meaning instead of being this sort of global notion that's imported everywhere. If we want to change the value of a variable in normal math, we actually define new variables. For instance, in a recurrence relation, we can say x at the next time step, which is a different variable from x at the previous time step, and define the one for the new time step in terms of the old value. Two different values, two different variables. So let's get back to colon equals and what Odersky is talking about here. He's saying, for example, that using equals for assignment complicates these kinds of notions that might come from mathematics where you might expect equals to be more of a definition. And this history of using colon equals has a lot of history in computer programming and predates Pascal, but perhaps is popularized by Pascal. And so let's look at an example of Pascal and how colon equals works here. Here's a Pascal program called demo. We've declared a variable called a, type integer, value 1. We can print it out. We get a 1 over here. Let's change this value, this variable, because now we're back in programming land in the procedural kind of programming paradigm where we have variables that change values and constants that don't change values during the execution of the program, which is, again, very different from how it works in math. So I can print out the value again, but change its value first. And this right here is the wrong syntax in Pascal, as we'll see. I'll get an error for trying to use equals for assignment, because that's not how it works in Pascal. In Pascal, assignment uses this colon equals operator, which is what Odersky was talking about for assignment or variable mutation or changing in his proposal for Scala 3. If we run this now, it does work. We get 1 for the first uh, right line, 
and two for the second one because the value has changed. This is how you do an assignment in Pascal. A single equals does exist also in our main code block here, but it's used for comparison. I can say, for example, if a equals two, then right line, hurrah. So at least we understand what we're seeing. If we run this here, we get it out there because a does indeed equal two. As we're familiar with in the C syntax family, double equals is what we use for comparison there instead of a single equals like we use in Pascal. Let's go and remind ourselves what C looks like, even though most of us are probably more familiar with that than with Pascal. We have a similar program here. We declare a variable of type int, assign value one, and we'll print it out. And we get value one over there. If we want to change the value, we'll use our single equals, which is our assignment operator, which again wasn't invented by C, but was popularized by C and the popularity of C over the last many decades. If we run this here, we'll get a one and a two, because this is our assignment operator here. Notice, again, reminding ourselves how constants often work and how we talk about constants in popular programming languages of today. If we make it a constant, we'll get an error message from the compiler, which says, you can't assign to this variable A because it's const qualified. <clears throat> Notice here again that they're still calling it a variable that just that it's const qualified. Because again, really, variables that mean that things change values. Variables are just you know, names that represent values, and they happen to be mutable or changeable in many of our programming languages of today. Uh, let's look at an example in Rust where they made a different decision. There's a lot of people who say that values that don't change, if a variable can't change its value, is going to be easier to reason about and less likely to be buggy in your code. So you should make it easier to make variables const qualified, say, for example, than to have them be mutable or changeable. Uh, so let's run this example here in Rust. If we do this, we'll see a equals one, we'll print it out, we get the value over there. If we try to change the value and print it again, like we were doing before, and this is a C syntax family, so single equals is assignment in Rust, <clears throat> and we run this here, we get an error because we can't assign to an immutable variable, and a is immutable by default. We have to put this mute qualifier on it to make it mutable or changeable. Now if we run it again, we get what we expected from before. Rust has chosen to make variables immutable or unchangeable by default. There are other languages, for example, Haskell, which is purely functional, where you never change the value of a variable ever. And we'll have to save that discussion for a different day. Let's move on to a little bit other discussion of what const means or doesn't mean in different languages. And this is an example in JavaScript here. I have a variable called a, which I've said it's constant. And I've assigned it the value of an object with field b and value one. If I print that out, I get b with one. Okay, cool. When I say const in JavaScript, I can't assign a new value to a itself. That variable a is always going to refer to this object. If I run this here, I get this error message, assignment to constant variable. You can't do that. What you can do, however, in JavaScript, which doesn't work, for example, in Rust, is I can change the contents of what it's pointing to. It's a very shallow notion of constantness. If I say a dot b equals two and run this, I have changed the contents of what's inside of A <clears throat> without reassigning to A itself. So this is shallow constantness versus deep constantness like you'll see, for example, in Rust. And uh, so some languages that use const this way uh, are perhaps not appreciated uh, the use of the, of the term. So for example, in Java, they'll use the word final instead of const when you can't reassign a value because they don't have a way, just like in JavaScript, you don't have a way of forcing deep constantness. Moving on, however, while in the C family of languages, the C syntax family, we use single equals for assignment, uh, there's some interesting that's happened recently with the popularity of the Go programming language. Uh, if I run this program here, I'll get the same thing as before, a variable with value one, I print it out, I get it there. However, there is a resurrection of this colon equals operator. It's just a shorthand, however, for declaration and initial value. It's not the assignment operator we had from Pascal. So this means the same thing as what we had before. If we want to change the value and print it out again, we can do that. And we get one and two. Notice here assignment is still a single equals because it follows the C tradition. Now there's interesting variations on this. Because Go has been so popular in recent years, other languages have started using colon equals for combo, declaration, and initialization. For example, Odin programming language does a similar thing here, but it means something slightly different than what it does in 
go. Here in Odin, we can see x colon equals one, two, three, which is combo declaration and initialization. But colon equals is not an operator in Odin. This is equivalent to saying, I want to declare a variable, but infer its type and assign initial value. These are two separate operators that just the white space is used differently when put together and is equivalent to making this statement here. Just an interesting way and different way of looking at it. Again, uh, Odin is not the only language that has done variations on this theme since the popularity of Go. And in other languages, we've also seen the resurrection of the colon equals operator in Python 3.8 that came out this year where they call this the walrus operator often. It has also been resurrected, but it means something different either than in Go or in Pascal. It just looks the same. Prior to Python 3.8, in order to do a variable assignment, you had to make it its own statement. You could not use assignment as an expression such as how you can do in C. In Python 3.8, they introduced this walrus operator in order to do assignment, which basically has the exact same semantics as normal assignment in Python, except that now you can use it as an expression embedded in a larger statement. I personally think this is great because it can be used to make code more readable in some cases, but it was a very controversial decision uh, in the community because there are pros and cons to any decision you make. This was such a controversy that Guido Van Rossum, the creator of Python, stepped down from his role as benevolent dictator for life. It wasn't quite for life after all. And uh, this we get referenced going back to Scala again. A few days after Odersky raised this notion of using colon equals for assignment, he backed off from it. He says, Guido Van Rossum retired over colon equals. I decided that I do not want to share the same fate yet. Uh, he says, it would be the right thing to do in isolation, but realities make it messy. So he says, we're just going to stick to a single equals for assignment like we've always had and hope, for example, that syntax highlighting in editors can make it clear when equals means one thing or the other. Is this the right thing for each language? Maybe, maybe not. We'll have to discuss more about this a different day. Bye, y'all.